<laughs> Hold on, let me get this set up because. Do your thing. Oh my. I can't even. Oh my, indeed. Look at you. <laughs> Amazing. I need a filter, sis. It's Amazing. good. Are you set up? About, just about, just about. Okay, well, let me introduce you. This oh, is. Oh, I love, I love this. But this is the filter. Oh. Oh, we can do filters? This is the filter for me, sis. Uh, this is the filter for, this is the filter for me. I didn't even know you do filters. I no. fucked with it. So uh, my, mouth, my mouth broke right before this, and I'm trying to, like, finagle this so this phone doesn't fall. I might have to end up holding it, but it's all good. <laughs> oh, my How are God, you, I love? Know you do filters. Oh, that's cute. Okay, yeah. I'm down with that. <laughs> No. Okay. Oh, that was cute. I love that one of you. Oh my god. Okay. Hi, you, just put me on. you just put okay, me the on phone, <laughs> The phone I'm might fall, sis. All of these interviews now. <laughs> oh, girl, I always put the filters on. Girl, I mean, I don't, you know, we don't need them. You're a beautiful girl, and, you know, I do my thing, so we don't need them, but it yeah. helps. Helps. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Well, how are um, you, my love? Talk to me, talk to me, feeling? talk to me. I'm feeling amazing. I, I just came off of a really busy day, but everything is blessed. No complaints. How are you? Blessed? Oh, did the filter come off? Came off. I can't I can't multitask, clearly. Um, it came off. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not meant to be. <laughs> it's all good, sis. But, it's all um, good, right? Kidlip music. You're a music producer, a songwriter, performing artist. Yeah. Like um yeah. we your latest uh, track is called Read You Like I'm Kia. Uh, Kaya, yeah, yeah. Read You Like I'm Kaya, like the artist, like Kaya. Kaya, Kaya my bad. I don't know why yeah. I called the car. Like I'm Kaya, and I just heard it like a million times when I was streaming that. <laughs> yeah. It's on it's, all streaming platforms, so everybody, Join. tune in. Tune in. Tune in, tune in. <laughs> <laughs> and you also have your latest album, which is also available on all streaming platforms. Liddy Kitty Volume 2. Smooth that is Kitty Kitty. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, that's mm -hmm. the name of the title, but it's smooth. It's a smooth project, so y'all go check that out. <laughs> um, which came out earlier this year. It came out in June. But the latest, that's latest was Read You Like I'm Kaya. And you like I'm Kaya what an amazing Ooh, la, la, la. <laughs> yeah, ah, really, la, la, la. I can't That's believe my song. it. I That's can't actually my song. It. I love that song. It's so good. It's so good. So good. I was so hyped, just jamming, <laughs> like alone <laughs> in my crib as I prepare for the interview. I'm like, hey, I'm really digging this. Okay. Thank you, Sid. Um, Is this my lighting look okay? Cause I, it looks dark on my phone, but I'm like, no, you I don't look know if it's great. Um, everyone oh, who's you. tuning in right now, put a one. Throw up your ones if he looks good is his throw lighting ones, good babies. you feel the parts <laughs> throw up them throw up them ones babies throw yeah, them ones you. in the chat if if his lighting is good i think it's cute i just my phone gets really dark and it gets weird no i think you look great it's thank fine. you baby it's so talk to me what's up there you go we got some ones in the chat you see you good it's fine <laughs> what's up vince i see vince has joined the chat Hey. So I actually never have met you. I don't think I've met you, but I definitely met Vince. And I like so when he invited me to the Garnett Report, I thought it was gonna be like maybe him doing it. Tell me about you. Like I'm not trying to interview, but like who are you? Like who's interviewing <laughs> me right now? <laughs> well, let me introduce myself. I'm Carolina Goris. I'm a journalist yes. at the Garnet Report. Okay. Um, and you know, like I do my thing. I just do my thing. It's really nice meeting you, though. It's nice um, meeting you too. <laughs> I hear you're a Brooklyn native. I'm from, from BK, Brooklyn. baby. BK all day, every day. You already <laughs> know. <laughs> I don't even think we have a, do we have a sign? Like, I don't even know what the sign would be. No, like, no. Please. I know BX has hey, like. <laughs> I know, Whoa, that's, I get so jealous. <laughs> every time I see the BX people throw their sign up, I'm like, right, I'm gonna throw something like, up too. <laughs> you know what, I, I'm originally from Harlem, but I am living in bed now, so okay, I'm BK, okay. I'm, B, I'm repping BK now, so. Oh, I used to live in bed -Stuy. bed -Stuy used to be my stomping ground, it's nice. Really? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, you see connections, connections. <laughs> and exactly. where are you, where are you at now? I'm in East Flatbush, actually. 
Oh, so you're still in Brooklyn. I'm still in Brooklyn today. <laughs> <laughs> today alone or like you live in Brooklyn? No, I live in Brooklyn, but okay. you know, I'm, I'm always, I especially, I just be out. I be trying to get out, just hitting it. Yeah. Hitting the yeah, street, yeah, yeah. traveling, trying to just see more of the U.S., more of the world and stuff. COVID sure. has really, like, fucked a lot of things up for people. I'm but, saying. What's this yeah. year been like for you? Yeah. What's this year been like for you? It's been a, it's been um really, it's been a blessing. I'm just going to wrap it up in, mm -hmm. in that one word. It's been a blessing. I actually thought that it would have been a lot worse when this thing first came out. I mean, I was in, um I was at Mardi Gras in February, and... I had such a good time Nola. there. It was in NOLA, in the, in the NOLA. Yes, Woo! I was with the best of them out there. Like, you know, Big Frida's a friend of mine, so we were out there chilling. Ah. We uh, supported her for a couple of the events that she did. And I, and I literally, like, said to myself, like, this year can't get any better. Like, this is so, this is the moment. It's and then so COVID nice. happened, right? And then so, like, a lot of things changed and a lot buzz of, there was killer. a lot of, it was a buzz killer in a lot of ways, but, I find that oh what up Mel yo shout out to Melodic on this I I also shouted you out bro on my last interview because he's one of the guys that I've actually produced music for like I actually sat down and produced for him and oh, wow. he I mean the song we came up with Miss Rona like hey Miss Rona, Rona I've got a question <laughs> <laughs> how'd you serve the girl so fierce and I just I love Ooh. I love Romeo this is dope but I was in March I was saying to myself like yo, this is, this is really, really bad. Like, I'm not going to be able to travel. Mm. I don't know what work is going to look like because um, I work in the, like, medical industry by day and I do music and a couple other stuff, you know, wow. in addition to that. So I, like, Shout my out industry, to you. I thought, thank you, thank you. But I'm, I'm in elective surgery space. So for me, I thought that that would mean just obliteration. And for sales, it went down a lot. But I would say mm -hmm. that, education but like something we did so we we did a lot of like educating the doctors and things like that and so that turned out to be really really dope and then with music i was actually able to work a lot on like my craft like you know really be inside that's right you know i have a little studio in my own space so i just i kind of just work in that space yeah. and i just got better and better and better and better and better and so yeah. like it it for a lot of people this year suck i did lose a few friends i did lose you know people close and i understand that but I, I try to look at the bright side, you know? Mm -hmm. I look mm -hmm. at the bright side. So the year's been blessed. The year's been blessed. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah, I think a lot of people uh, got a chance to, like, regroup and, like, really self-reflect. Oh, and, my like, God. Work on themselves, work on their craft, which is amazing. Wow. The Earth, had, the Earth had a chance to regroup, right? like planet Earth. You know, like, NYC, like, when you go out there, yeah. you see animals and trees and stuff actually had, like, things we took for granted before. So, yeah, we all needed to regroup collectively. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm getting jealous of you with your filter. Let me see if I can try it again. Here we go. Baby, I'm about to. Uh, should I switch? No, I'm just going with what works. Cause I'll be switching through the filters and. That's yeah. A beautiful filter. I know you Look just you. put me on. I did not even know about the filters on the line. Really, so like, okay. really. All I'm right. glad I, I, could, I I'm glad I could shine some light. I'm glad I could shine some light, sis. So um, Corona, <laughs> Corona made it new to me. This whole interviewing on IG Live. So right now, yeah. this is like still new to me. So I'm like messing around with it, and you just yeah. put me on. Do you, do you, do you, is this your preferred method of like communication when it comes to like interviewing people? Do you like the in person thing, or do you actually like the virtual better? Oh snap! Okay, you became the interviewer. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, I would say that I, like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I just like streaming. Like I like broadcast. So everything okay. is usually like on camera for me. Um, so this is not that different, except that I've never done it on an IG platform, and yeah. now I'm even considering, you know, Twitch because Twitch is very popular, and there's I, you I know money so in Twitch. I feel a type of way because for me, I really got into like the TikTok thing and I really was trying mm -hmm. to push my music on there. And I had a lot of people who discovered like a hundred plus people who discovered my music and would repost it mm -hmm. and funny things through TikTok. And now that Donald Trump, that orange nigga in the White House is like literally blocking the app. I get hater. it. I get it. No, I get it. You know, like it's like a security risk according to them. But like, it makes me nervous about trying to build my following on like another app. And like really going hard for it and trying to build it and then it getting shut down. Like I just, yeah, I mean, maybe I guess, that was a one-off. I guess that's why Instagram came out with reels, you know? So it's like 
Yeah, I, I think mean, see, true. switch over, you know, keep it on the IG type of <laughs> monopoly. Yeah, I think, I think that's true. I think that's yeah. right. I think that's actually it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so did you also grow up in Brooklyn? So you're like from Brooklyn, grew up in Brooklyn. Yes, man. So you went I... to college and uh -huh. you went to, um, you went to Vanderbilt University. Yeah, yeah. In the Vanderbilt. music city. Music Nashville, fucking city. Tennessee. Wow. Yes, yes. What was that experience? That's my alma mater. I loved, I loved every bit of Vanderbilt. I loved every bit of Nashville. I loved every bit of the city. Like, Nashville is such a hidden treasure in a lot of ways. Like, people hear the name a lot, and they get associated with, like, country music. So, you know, like, certain people go to that, you know, for a specific reason. But I discovered Neil So I discovered blues. I discovered, like, Elvis, like, really was blues. Like, he was, like, I mean, it was so much stuff in Memphis, so much stuff in Knoxville, so much stuff in Chattanooga. Tennessee is a great state. I mean, unfortunately, they go red every year, so they're definitely uh, <laughs> Republican strong, but... Problematic state, but nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless. I don't, I don't, anyway, I'm not, I, I'm like more independent anyway, but you know, it definitely, it, it, it can have its racist side, but my school experience, aside from that, I had a really, really good time. I mean, the bar scene is lit. Education was obviously really, really good. So yeah. So uh, Yeah, look, just... American Princess. Yeah, I know my homegirl right here, she's from Tennessee. We love, we love our whiskey. <laughs> Come on now, <laughs> moonshine. <laughs> Um, so did you did you study music? Did you have any educational backgrounds in music? Or is this something just like yeah. that came from you? Funny enough, I actually started as a music um, with the intention, because you know you don't declare a major until like sophomore year, really. So yeah. I had the intention to do music. So I actually joined, I auditioned. I did like a Nick Cannon. I didn't know how to read, like sight read music or sight sing or what they call it. So, and I, but I had a little bit of like a technical knowledge. And then I like, I, I was always a, like, I sang a lot, you know, growing up, but I never was a technical singer. Like I never was formally trained, you know? And right. so this particular like professor, um, Dr. Childs, like, I mean, he, he was, it's old white guy, not old, like, pretty young, like maybe his fifties. Um, and he, <laughs> I auditioned for him. I, he had first heard my voice some, I don't remember where it was, a program or something like that. And he had told me to come audition. And I actually was thinking about music. So I was like, let me put some music courses in my palette so mm -hmm. I can do this. And so I auditioned and he realized, he knew right away I couldn't read, but I was faking it so well. And he was <laughs> like, listen, if you can learn it like this and you can sing it in the choir, like, you know, it was the symphonic choir, they called it. Um, mm -hmm. And plus you got credit for the course. Like, I think you would get along pretty well. The only black guy in there singing classical music. We were singing ballads and all this, like, it was real, real, like, classical music. And I, I started like that. But as time went along, I realized, like, uh, in conversation with my parents, and, you know, I come from a Caribbean background, so they want you to be doctors, Caribbean, lawyers. Shout they out have, to the Caribbean. Shout out to the Caribbean. Where were you from? Where in the Caribbean? <laughs> Dominican Republic. Yes, yes, I love it. You share the olive oil. But you know, I'm in BK, like all the all the uh, Labor Day parade and all. The, oh. Oh yeah, I missed uh, it. I missed, missed it this that. year. Although I, I haven't gone in a few years because it's gotten real crazy. I just go in the morning for food, girl, and I don't even bother with the with the mask. No, I got too much to lose. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I joined crazy. the choir and I sang and did all that stuff, whatever. So at some point, um. I had a conversation with my parents and they were like, listen, like, what do you, like, I was trying to declare a major. We we're trying to come up with ideas and they were just, I don't think they really saw the value like them and just like people I taught, they didn't really see the value in music. And I, I, I should have trusted myself more to really declare and go through with it fully, but there's no mistakes made in the universe. No, so no, I was no. like, it happened for a reason. It happened for a reason. And I, and I can tell you, I mean, being in the medical field now, like it, that's the reason, you know what I mean? Like I'm doing well yeah. with what I'm doing now. So that it works there's a out. Purpose for everything. Purpose for everything. So I declared a chemistry major, actually. So mm -hmm. like I, I, I took a bunch of courses sophomore year to, to really go in that direction. And I was like, you know what? Like, this will make my parents happy. And that's my mind frame was like that back then. But these days, I'm just doing me. I was like, <laughs> wow. I'm 100% doing me. A chemistry major? So he's yes. tall, dark, and handsome, and smart. Ooh, ooh. And smart. Okay. Go ahead and butter me up, friends. sis. <laughs> Like some toast, sis. Woo! Okay. You mad smart. <laughs> oh, chemistry. thank you. I appreciate Woo. it. You were beautiful that yourself. Is. Thank you. <laughs> so when did you realize you had a singing voice? Was that like from really young? So I actually started singing 
like practically in the womb. I mean, I would scream as a kid. That, to me, that was my idea of singing. Like, because you really warm your vocals up, scream. Not like straining your vocals, but I would like just be like, I was a fun kid. Like, I was just <laughs> using my voice a lot. And at some point, um, growing up in church, I started singing on like the praise team and th th things like that. And I realized like I had a really uh, like a love for harmony. Like I, harmony, I heard things in my head that I really I couldn't explain, and I wanted to know more about it. So I started like at I started actually really late. I started like maybe at like 14, 15. Whereas most kids who are successful in music, like they start really young. Like they're trained and a lot of them are immersed. Maybe they have parents who are in involved with that. My dad, he used to play the guitar a little bit and sing like for Christmas and Thanksgiving. You know, Caribbean parents, like, you know, that's, that's what he was getting in. But for the most part, like, I, I never really knew I could sing until somebody came to church and heard me singing on the praise team. This guy, he formed this group back in the day. Mm -hmm. And um, he asked me to be a part of the group. And so I auditioned, I got in and it, I was a part of this gospel group singing. And so I went off to college, did the symphonic choir thing. And I just was a part of groups, 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 groups. Like as time went by, we two in the truth. I did um, Carl Jackson, the Eminence, Lales and Harmon. I did a bunch of stuff. Um, and that's really where I developed like my singing ability and, and knowing and the confidence to know that like I could sing, you know? Yeah, that's so amazing. I um I was talking to another artist uh, from Brooklyn also, and yeah. he's just like, yeah, I started singing in at, at church basically, and I'm like, this is is this a theme or let me not go there, but it's like yeah. that's that's really like you know, it builds you know character and like you get to learn about yourself and right. all that, um because unfortunately the education system is like cutting arts for example and and you right. just don't have the options for electives and like to go out branch out try to do your own thing and learn like what you're really into so That's i cool. love that communities still have that opportunities for the youth you know right um, right right and so that's that's when you realize you had uh your your singing voice when you just became a part of this group and um not to mention you um also you also mentioned that you have this thing for like harmonizing and like you hear it and you don't really know how yeah. to explain it but is that why you're also like producing music like you just yeah. hear it you know what it want to sound what it should sound like and you just want to put it out there so you're like creating it because you hear it yourself so now you're a producer you're your songwriter singer performing yes. artist, everything yes all that and so how that actually you grew, that? yeah it grew out of a love for music but in a different kind of way so i was when I first graduated from college, uh, 2010, I'm 32. No, no, no shame in the age. <laughs> no shame. No shame. <laughs> and and I, I came from college and I, I started meeting people out in the scene in New York. Like my sister, she was she's a fashion um, designer and she mm -hmm. works in fashion. So I've met a lot of people in the industry through that. Yeah. But I also did stuff separately on my own. And I was like party king kind of guy, like all the parties, girl. And this is before I started going to gay parties. Girl, I was talking about all the straight parties, all the, the stuff in New York, the little dance hall, backyard barbecues. Like, I was oh in all that. Oh, my God. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I met a lot of people. And a couple of the people I met, you know, they were talented. And I, and I, I, and I, I thought to myself, like, since I love music so much, why don't I work with artists and really try to do artist development or, like, mm. maybe management or something like that? So I started playing around with that. And I met, like, a couple of artists who, you know, very talented, very talented. The problem was, you know, with talent comes great responsibility. And if you're not mm -hmm. consistent in your craft, I mean, some people want quick fame. I'm in this thing to win. Like, I want this to be a career for me and I want to make millions out of it. And I know it's going to happen. It's not that I want to, like, in 2020, it's I'm going to, you know, like, that's what I'm practicing. I'm going to. So, believe. yeah, you got to. And you got to declare and manifest. So that's where I'm at. And I realized that they, they they weren't as passionate about music as I was, you know? So missed studio mm -hmm. dates, not really taking the craft serious when it's time to write, it's taking long. It's like a lot of things I couldn't control because it's another person. So I said to myself, yeah. why would I be investing my time and my money and, you know, and, and just frankly my energy into people who aren't myself, you know, like who isn't me? Like, the best person to invest in, take note, is yourself, is yourself. So um, I literally everybody heard that right there. Yeah, literally in 2014, I came to the point of just like this was like maybe the beginning of the year. I said, listen, I'm going to just do this as a project. You know, I obviously 
did not know how to rap as well as I think I know how to rap now, or I didn't think I didn't, I didn't tap into it yet. Is what is really what it was. I didn't tap into that yet. So the singing into, came first. first before the rapping. The singing was always there first, but the writing and the producing and the rapping that came as a function of music production. So I bought like I spent like three thousand dollars on like a MIDI keyboard. Um, I bought. And mind you, I'm not rich. Like this is like working. No, well, this is investing. Before. This is a startup company yeah. right now. Because, yeah, exactly. Yeah. At that and point, literally, cause... like, literally, yeah, and you got, you got it, you got to do, it. you got to take that step. And I said, I'm, a, I looked up, I go, I'm a big Google guy, like I like to Google shit a lot. So I Google self education. Exactly, I literally Google how to become a music producer, and there was a ton of YouTube was big back then, like in 2014. So it was like a ton of videos where people like literally broke down to you what you needed, like I mean, and there were articles about, and it's the information's out there if you want, if you want to get it, it's there. And I literally looked up everything on list, check, 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 bought everything. And I set it up right here in my little home studio. And it wasn't here at first. It was actually in my apartment back in bed -Stuy. That's where I actually set it up first. That was the first, that was the first, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and literally like I set it up and I just started looking at YouTube videos and, 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 and making music. Like I literally heard it in my head. As I'm hearing it, I'm not a big keyboard player, but I know enough to be able to get the note out. So I know what the note's supposed to sound like, the pitch, and I play it on the keyboard, and I just started making beats. And at first, it was a long process. It would take me, like, days, sometimes weeks, to even make yeah. the, the bass line of a beat. Very like, tedious work. It was work. very tedious work. But, like, I've come to the point now where it's so easy. It's like, it it's just, just it, it comes out. And it's getting better, better and better. So that's where I was at. 2014 that's started what you my do. year. That's what happens when you invest in your craft, when you invest in yourself. And you dedicate that time, you're investing time into yourself where, um, you know, you just get better. You get better with practice. You might be getting a phone call. I think you froze. Come back. Let's see if I can get him back, guys. Then he got a he had gotten a phone call. Or his phone turned off, which would be sad, but no no no. Let's get him back. Working on it. In the meantime, I will have you guys enjoy some of his music. Can you see me? Improvise, yeah, I can see you. Here we go. Okay, good. All right, because guys, Insta back on. Instagram has been kicking me off all day, literally. Like, I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired of it. And it's like, it, it keeps doing that, especially with lives. Like, it'll kick you off, and then I got to get all set up again. Oh, man. Okay, well, we're back. That was a, we are that back. Was a quick little uh, interruption there, but, you know, we're back and we're going Yeah, it. sorry about that. And I tell you, this mouth broke. No, so worries. Like, I was like, he got a phone call or something. I don't know. Maybe your phone died. But it's somebody Instagram did text me. Maybe that, is that what it is? Somebody did text me. So like, or like. No, it would be like something. a phone call. Like something has to interrupt the live. You know. Okay. If somebody calls you, sometimes it goes like on pause, and you kind of froze. But yo, even your froze was like perfect. You're like. like, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's how does he it's actually it? frozen right now for me. Can you see me? I can see you. You're not frozen anymore. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, am I frozen? Yeah, the whole thing is frozen. Like, my phone is, like, frozen. Oh. What is going on? It's, like, lagging now. 
You're moving in like slow motion. Um, I don't know. Can you go on live on your computer? I heard that, but you're still like frozen and lagging, so. Sorry, guys. Hang in there. We're working through it. Again, I'm going to play his music until he comes back. Bear with us, guys. You ugly niggas tired against me, trying to conspire. I'm your duty, this is a I feel sweet, me like my raya. Pretty pussy, play on player. That's the beat, your bitch is tired. Ain't no VG, like a player. Look my lip, me back on fire. All you ugly niggas tired against me, trying to conspire. I'm your duty, this is a I feel sweet, me like my raya. Pretty pussy, play on player. That's the beat, your bitch is tired. Oh, la 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 la. Oh, la 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 la. Oh, la 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 la. Okay. Is it better now? Can you actually see me? I can see your shirt. It says Litty Kitty. Oh, yeah. That's branding, sis. Love it. Litty Kitty. So, actually, funny story about this shirt. Um, my homegirl, I did a program called Momentum Education. Shout out to all my Momentum folks. So, the back of this says, I am an outrageous, authentic. Here we go. I'm a powerful, outrageous, authentic leader. Shout out to LT173. It's like this empowerment program I did uh, in 2019, and I really, really enjoyed it. And one of the girls, Simone, she's so talented. She actually designed this logo and the shirt, and mm -hmm. she, wow. she, she did that. She did that. She did that. But I'm sorry. Like, we're back did? on. We're back on. We're back on. OK. <laughs> Are you on your laptop now or so, a computer or something? No, can I be on my computer with the live? I have no idea. I've never tried it. I'm telling you, I'm new okay. to this Instagram stuff. It's like 2020 has me all over the place. But <laughs> I'm gonna try it again on my. I'm gonna try it one day on my computer. But I've only. I haven't gone live a lot. Like I really just started going live, and I and I literally like, like the you phone. see all the love you're getting, right? All this fan love. We went over right, 500. Thank you, thank you guys so much. No, I, I always come on, y'all. That means you need on. to you need to go on the live more often. I do, I do need to go more often, but. I find that like if I don't have content to talk about, but I, I'm gonna make some stuff. I'm working right now on like a a podcast type of stuff. Yeah, like this thing called the Lit, Lit you Nation. I already bought the domain. I already got the stuff. Like it's like it's 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 in the works. And so I'm gonna be. I actually posted a few videos on my page, about four or five of them. Um, just like random hot topic type of stuff. And yes. I, I'm really into like that it. right now. I like it. Yeah, hey, call me up if anything. Okay. Oh, sis, you already know. <laughs> You already know. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I wanted to ask about uh, this band that you join. Am I saying it right? When I say "We Two and Truth," "We Two and the Truth," I love them. That was my. That was. That, that, that was, was like during college. That was during college, nice. and it was random because I was the type of student that liked to go to the neighboring university. So, like, my school was a predominantly white school, but I would go all the way to Trap Girl, past the Red Verbal Tracks down to TSU, Tennessee yeah. State. I used to be right at Fisk, girl. I used to be at the Yard, because I pledged pretty early. Like, I pledged freshman year, second semester, um, Cap Alpha Psi. So I was, I was often, like, just off campus. And I met this girl. I don't remember if I met her at a music event or if I met her, um, like, it was definitely a music event I met We Too. And, mm. you know, we just talked about our love for music, and we talked about, like, what she was looking for and stuff. She was looking for a background singer. And... To me, I, I was in the background. So I didn't have the same background for no one, but like the praise team. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to audition and try it out. Like, you know, she's real cool. She's like becoming like a friend potential type of thing. So let me just, let me try it out. And I auditioned for her and I, I got it. And she liked the vibe. We worked well together. And we did that um, Battle of the Bands thing, uh, which was like a competition um, against like local bands. And we actually won. Like, I didn't think, I mean, listen, I, in my head, I always think we're going to win. But, like, 
I really didn't know. Like, I really didn't know. And that shit turned out to be... It, it hit. Real when official. it hit, it was like, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah, epic. It was official. And official. you guys have been, like, opens for, like, Q-Tip, T.I. Yeah. Um, I have pictures, Samuel. videos, everything from that time. I'm so glad. I was, like, I had my blog in college, so I covered everything as a part of... It was called Ali Wakil, or it was called, like, Michael Romeo, or, like, what? It was called, like, something in college, and then it evolved into Follow the Experience. Yeah. So I've always been into that like journalistic type of like. Yes. Thing. And I I remember just like really really falling in love with that like really falling in love with that moment. I mean Q Tip, like you know Pharrell. I had all of that shit on video and tape, girl. And it's you, it's is so it, worth is it. it. A, is it available for your fans to go see now? I'm gonna like, I'm gonna go YouTube? through my Facebook and I'm gonna I'm gonna download all those videos right, and I'm gonna right. post them because post it was them, really some. Them. YouTube yeah. uh, channel, like its own little maybe, section. Maybe, like, like do like a like, like a throwback type of, thing. type of throwback, um, you know, memories. Mem uh, that's walk actually, down memory that's, lane or something like you know. That's uh, a really good idea. That's a really really good idea. Yeah. I, I'm actually gonna, uh, and I like to throw throwback. I like to post throwbacks from time to time. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's a good idea. For sure. Um, so. I wanted to ask you about um, the record label Liddy Kitty. So Liddy Kitty Productions. Tell me yeah. more about this label. Who founded it? How did it get with them? It's my it's my label. Like it's I literally. <laughs> is that I was certain of, of it. <laughs> it's not much of a story. Like the story is really that like when I upload my music to DistroKid, they require that you put the label that you're releasing your song on. I'm an independent artist, so it's my label. Like, you know, I do, my company is Shout Kidlet Music Inc. Out there. Shout out to all the independent artists out there. You guys are winning. You guys are owning your masters. Don't give it up. Yes. I don't care what no one says, girl. It's going to take, even if it takes me 10 more years to find success, which it won't, but even if it did, girl, it won't. <laughs> I am going to never sell a single one of my tracks to no big major. It just doesn't make sense. Like, for me, these days, it's a trap. I don't care about the advance. And I don't care about all that stuff. Like, somebody who believes in me is going to advance me some money. That's what I right. believe. You know, I'm not going right. to have to have it from, from a, a major record label. You have, you have um, the fan base. Look how many yeah. viewers we have. We went up to, like, 600. You have the, the fan we, base. Where are we at? Oh, we're at 560. Okay. We're at 560, 563. You know, it's going up and down. But, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, we was, but we was up there. You have the fan base, and that's because... Yeah you know, is authenticity. That love is is authentic. They feel Thank you, you your music, you. and it's there. So, you know, like, you know, it's a trap. Don't do it. <laughs> so, I, I, I Kitty, won't. Liddy, though, the Kitty Liddy. Liddy Kitty <laughs> Productions. And the funny thing is, I try to trademark the names, but there's this girl in California who owns the trademark, and I'm so pissed because it's like, but it's like, for, I think I have first use over it. We'll see. I think I've been using it longer. So if she ever tries to sue me, then <laughs> well, I got a surprise for you. <laughs> Liddy Kitty. <laughs> what if you had a committee? Liddy Kitty committee. <laughs> That's good. So, that might be the next song. So this is how I come up with songs, too. When people say funny shit, they, it's well hey, noted, girl. I was also it's in noted. marketing in college, so I know a little bit of the marketing. Were you? Okay. Yeah. So you, PR, is that you like the PR? PR, marketing, and then I did multimedia production. Okay. A little bit of everything. Just getting, you know, like, because everything goes hand, hand in hand, like, these days, with the way that yeah. technology is set up. Yeah. But... Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I feel you. That's just no. We gotta talk. <laughs> Pers pursue that, sis. Pursue that. That's definitely, definitely needed right now, for sure. In a lot of in a lot of places, PR is, is the way to go. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, you told me about when you began to produce and write your own, you know, tracks. You just knew yeah. what it wanted to sound like. Um, do you have any favorite artists or inspirations, or what did you grow what? up with? This is easy. I mean, I, aside from gospel, because gospel is always a staple. I mean, the James Halls, the, um, you know, mm -hmm. Donnie McCurkins. Like, I mean, I'm really into gospel that way because I think vocally, like, it excites me in a lot of ways. The Clark Sisters, Jay Moss is, I'm a huge fan of Jay Moss. Jay Moss is, like, sickening on um, what he can do with music. But I listen to them more for the harmonies. Now, in terms <laughs> of musicality and rapping and stuff, like, I grew up big on Jay-Z. I grew up big Brooklyn. on Brooklyn's in the building. Right. Brooklyn's in the building. Every time. 
Oh, child, like all day. I grew up big <laughs> on the Neil Soul movement too. Like Neil Soul, like I was really into Bilal, music soul child. I sang, I remember when I watched my, one of my first talent show in college, I actually was an undergrad and I, I'd be finding the weirdest shit since like, I somehow saw a flyer on like the Vanderbilt Law School, like board. And I was just studying in their library and I saw a flyer and it was like a talent show. And mind you, like, no one really thought to, like, as an undergrad, really thought to enter that. So I just, I was like, listen, I'm not to enter. It's, it's a cash the laws prize. of attraction. Everything happens cash for a reason. Prize. I sang Music Soul Child Love and yeah. Sis. And I was the only undergrad who entered that competition. I was the only undergrad. Everyone else was in grad school or, like, from the general Nashville area. And I won. Like, I won. And I, I, maybe they felt sorry for me because I was, like, an undergrad and I didn't want me to feel bad. But, no, I, I won. I, I, got, I got that. And... Music Soul Child was the song I sang. So Music Soul Child. Wow. Um, um, I'm really big into Azalea Banks. I mean, Azalea Banks, I was going to save her for last because everyone knows that, who knows me, knows that my love for her music. She has, you know. she has hot takes sometimes. Sometimes I know. You know? <laughs> A lot of people get that. But I say it without, like, the commas or without the semicolons or without the ellipses, girl. I say it straight on. I love Zelly Banks music. There's no if, ands, or buts about it for me in particular. And I get people who they say, like, they see the behavior, they see all that. But I love her, and I think she's so talented. I'm hey, really she's into from Cupcake. Harlem. She's home. from Harlem. Harlem, she's, okay. She's really, she's, yeah, I'm really into Cupcake. But she wasn't, like, an influence okay. of mine. I'm just really into her music now. Yeah, Influence-wise, yeah. um, I don't know if you've heard of Victor Duple. Uh, he's, like, uh, kind of like a neo-soulish artist. To LA, like I was into that neo soul movement, heavy D'Angelo, like all that R&B yeah. and rap. So and I'm, gospel, those are my three. And then electronic, of course, you can't go wrong with that. Right, 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 right. And I yeah. see it all, all of it in your Thank music, you. like Thank all you. of it. Is, so I was, I'm like, how would you describe your genre? I think my genre. Um, hold on, sorry. I was trying to record this. Oh my God, no, it's happening <laughs> I again. forgot that I was okay. <laughs> um, No, because something with my phone did a glitch thing. It was weird. But um, I would describe my genre as electro soul. I actually think that I'm pioneering this new... I, I'm looking for legacy in music, right? Like, I'm not looking yes. just for a quick hit or a quick pop. Mind you, that would be nice. Like, who doesn't want a quick hit and a quick pop? But I also want legacy. This phone keeps falling. Calling. Did your phone fall? <laughs> I'm about to just hold it, girl. I'm gonna just hold nervous. it, girl. I'm just I gonna feel hold like it. You're gonna leave us again. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm right here, baby. I'm right here. But I'm gonna <laughs> hold the phone because I can't deal with this thing falling. I'm gonna show you the mount, like, girl. I'll show it to you so you can understand what I'm talking about. But it's real bad. This shit fell apart on me, girl. Look. Oh my god, I have the same one and I'm using it right now. I feel this, like I'm so be mad about this. Did it's it like so... tip over and then just like popped? No, like the base of it, there's something that's going on with the screw and it did not screw in properly. So like now I don't even have the light. Like I don't even need it. I'm okay. Uh, it got on my nerves and I and every time I try to put it up, it falls off like I need, I need to talk to Amazon and get a replacement or something. Yeah, yeah. Talk to the manufacturer cuz that's not that's not right. You yeah, know, yeah. especially if it was recent, you'd be like, hey, what's up? Oh, <laughs> it, was, it was today. It was literally before this interview. <laughs> no, but like if it was recent that you purchased it, otherwise you have oh, to. Oh, no, I just got, yeah, yeah. I just got it like a couple months ago. So, yeah, it's pretty new. Yeah, hit him up because that's, that ain't right. It ain't right. We need to have the lighting. We need to have, you know, the free hands. The full, the full thing, sis. We need the full thing. Damn, I'm so sorry that happened today. Like out of all the days, I could have happened at like at nine, maybe. <laughs> I know. Like as soon as I put the phone, I was like, "That can't be right." <laughs> 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 like, it just fell apart. I don't even use it that often, so that's so funny. But <laughs> but um, okay. So you also opened for uh, Princess Nokia. This time it was it was. Oh yeah, yeah, I love her. Exactly. First of all, my best. I think my best. Op well, as an independent artist, because. Exactly. Opening for Q-Tip and um and for like and all them like that was cool and that was yeah. definitely like I mean that's like one of the highlights. But I was a part of a group then. But for my own music, CC Peniston though that to me was I think the best pride that I've opened up. Is for. that Only um pride. was that Harlem or Brooklyn? Uh, that pride. was actually Queens, Queens Pride. Queens, Queens. I'm sorry, Queens or Har you did both Queens and Harlem. I did uh, Queens. Did Harlem. 
I did New York. I think I might have done Brooklyn. Girl, I've done all the Pride, Ooh. and I love it. I'm the, I'm yes. gonna I'm gonna do the Pride. Make me a Pride staple. <laughs> okay. Word. Shout out to Kendrell, Kendrell, who actually hooked that New York Pride um, gig up, which was really nice. Shout out to Kendrell, thank you. Um, but it was yeah, literally, Princess Nokia was a good one. I think she was like, like in her prime too, like, and. Actually, EJ Johnson was the one who was moderating, and he was the one who was, like, on the mic. So I got to meet him, too. And he's, he's really cool, too, EJ Johnson. He's really nice. And Lauren Gregory, she does music, too. Um, I met a couple people for that performance, and I was really happy with the job um, that we did. Shout out to my background dancer. Um, he's really, really dope, y'all. I'm going to at everybody, like, after this, I'm going to post this, and I'm going to at some of the people I mentioned so I can give them credit. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So they can... Uh, thrive in their, in their yeah shout out to them i mean it takes a village too you know like it everyone takes a village it takes a village absolutely absolutely that's what makes it brilliant i wanted to ask what uh what's your experience like doing um you know pride fest and pride showcases and well what is your favorite part about it or what is the most challenging part about it my favorite part is the build up the build up to be is like what gets me going yeah. Okay, of course my yeah. phone's about to die. Okay, I'm just about to plug this in directly to this. This phone needs to work with us. We got 50 you know what it, you know. the live is over, like work with us. <laughs> we have around 600 people tuning in right now live. It's plugged in, you know what it is? I didn't, I, have so, I had so much to do and I didn't even like, I couldn't plug my phone and all day I was like on the move. I finally got home and like, shit, I got 15 minutes till this live comes up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what that was. Yeah. Um, but I forget where I was at, tough, remind me, remind all me. All right, so what is the best part of being part of like Pride Fest and Pride Showcase and what are some yeah, of the problems? Yes. The best part is the build up. I think it's like the energy that I feel right before I get on stage because mm. seeing that stage and seeing those people, I mean, I think New York Pride was the biggest um, audience I performed for. Thousands of people. It was just, it was really incredible how many people were there. And it just felt nice to, one, have the support of my friends. Shout out to everybody who made it that, that day. I think it's so crucial when you have supportive friends and see familiar faces in the audience. Yes. But like singing my music and, and, and seeing people's reaction to the lyrics are always like, that's like always a good thing because my <laughs> lyrics are pretty. They're pretty raunchy, but they're pretty funny, and and I and I do that on purpose to really create a little bit of controversy, and it's you know. Just so factuals. it's just facts. Sometimes, <laughs> you know. Sometimes, just, sometimes, just sometimes. Facts. Sometimes. Um. But yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, it's, sometimes it's just real funny. <laughs> and raunchy. What was that? Sometimes it's just funny shit, girl. But so other times, I'll be. I think I'll be pretty spot on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but that yeah, that's the best part of those those pride moments, like. And and I wouldn't trade that. I mean, like, you got to start somewhere. For me, I'm like, I'm I'm a gay man. Like, this, this is what it is. Shout out to LGBTQI, like all y'all. You know, I got my own set of preferences and stuff. But I I, I prize um, you know, being able to create in that space because gay guys typically don't really support each other like that. Like, it sucks because, you know, they they feel like they're in competition. A lot of black gay men with each other because they feel like there's no spaces left for that. And I've been, I've, I've seen and witnessed that in a lot of spaces. But for me, I, I want to be in that LGBTQI space. I don't mind that. I don't mind being in that space. And if that's the kind of artist I turn out to be, that's great. I would prefer a universal stage and having that on a grander scale and then incorporating that into my music too. But it'll all get there. It'll all get there. I believe it. Thank you. We got the fans who believe it. Thank you, thank Big you. Big fan base. How would you describe your your fan base? Lady Kitty Army, like that's what it is. <laughs> it's giving me like, it's giving me real eclectic, um, real free, real authentic to self. Mm -hmm. Like I want, like I I do. Like, Lady Kitty's the set. Like you know, Nicki Minaj got her barbs, and like I don't know, Doja Cat has her people, and you know, Mariah got the lambs. I really want the Lady Kitty Army to be a thing, and. You know, that's why I'm coming up with stuff like this, like a couple merch. Like I have, yeah. a, I have a little visor. I have some stuff that I make. Like I really want people to get dialed in because it really is about the experience of freedom. And I freedom is so important these days in like 2020. Like we have so much time that we lost and so many people have died that like, it doesn't make sense to not live in your truth and live in your freedom. Like it, it these days, it's all about living in your truth and having that moment. And 
I want my fan base to be that way. I want y'all to be like just free. You are so free. freaking right now. I love it. Aw. That's Thank everything. You, oh my god. Yes. <laughs> and is this merch available for uh purchase right now or is there like a drop? Not yet. So I told you earlier about the issue with the trademark. I actually went to an attorney to try to get a trademark and they would not work like and I didn't want to keep wasting time going to consult consultation, things like that. Like they basically said like you know, it's going to come down to first use, make your stuff, post it. If she sues you, then, you you know, you'll just be in court. Like, you know what I mean? And that's just what it is. But it's like, she doesn't have a trademark on the actual merchandise. She has a trademark on the artist name, Liddy Kitty, because that's her DJ name or something. And I just, I, sometimes I just don't want to, it'll be out there soon, sis. Let's just put it that way. Like, okay. we'll get to it. We'll get you done. We'll get you yeah, done. Yeah, you need it. Yeah, yeah. Get the trademark for the merch. <laughs> yeah, we'll get you. I can't, the thing is, like, you can't literally because it's too similar. That's what they were telling me. It's too similar. You know, like they can argue this, this, and that. But I, I'm fucking with the shirt. Like, I'm loving it. Let's give you a little kitty vibe. Oh my god, it's so cute with the microphone glasses. Oh, he got a suit. Yeah, Simone did that, baby. Okay, shout that. out to Simone. It's beautiful, okay. yeah. We need we. I feel like the fan, the fans, the Liddy Kitty. What did he call them? The Liddy Kitty. Liddy Kitties, baby, or the Liddy Kitty oh, Army. Liddy Kitties. <laughs> the Liddy, no, Liddy Kitty Committee. You said it earlier. The Liddy yeah. Kitty Committee. Also, you are Actually, using committee. Committee. I love that. What? Girl, you give me like several <laughs> ideas. They can put you on a payroll, girl, if you're not already because you're already giving me ideas. Like, yeah. That's what's so up. your Liddy Kitty Committee definitely wants and needs these merch. You know, yeah. so and this I want to do something like with this hat too. Huh? I want to do something like with this hat where it's like Oh, you went blonde too. Okay, we're You like my blonde? Yes, we're both platinum, okay? Yeah, Love so it. this is a, it was initially like a rose gold mm -hmm. and I got it like um kind of, you know, like ombre effect cuz I let the the, the black it grow a little bit. Growing out. <laughs> and I've been using some product on it to keep it like this way, so it's a little bit a little platinum, a little yellow. I like it. I like it. So what were you saying about the hat? I got distracted. I'm like, oh, he's bald. <laughs> I want to do something with this hat, like the little kitten ears and shit. I want to yeah. do something with it. I want to do something. Well, I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to do something with it. Well, you're hearing it here first, fans. Liddy Kitty Committee. You hear Liddy it here Kitty first. Committee. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We out here, sis. That's what we doing. Exactly. Um... I asked you what was I asked you what was challenging. I don't think you ever answered that one. What was challenging about what? About your uh either Pride Fest or showcase or what's just challenging in general for you as a gay black man artist. Yeah. In this industry living Since, in these like, times. I'd like to think not much these days. I mean, you know, like I, there's so much that probably is but girl, I, like I tell you earlier, I don't focus on like that type of stuff. You know, th personal struggles and struggles with music, that is going to, ha it's going to be that way. You know, mm -hmm. anything that you really want in life, if it's not hard to get it, then it was never worth it to begin with. I feel like when I come to my moment and I really, really thrive in it, like I'm going to look back at these tough moments and I'm just going to laugh and I'm going to say like, it was so worth it. And it's and it, it will be, it will be. Shout out to all my friends. I would say one thing that like I could maybe voice that is challenging is really finding support from friends and family mm -hmm. um you know like i have my little crew of people who do that and who really have supported my sisters you know my best friends and just all of them but like really reaching and really trying to have them understand that i'm not the same guy you met 10 years ago i'm not the same guy you met five years ago i'm not the same guy you met one year ago and i'm actually moving pretty 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 steep with this music stuff and yeah. I, I want you guys to understand that and catching and momentum too yeah like, don't and, get and that that's behind it. get with it it's like and, that, and so that's a part of it and i look at like it's like a i think it's a black family thing too because i feel like a lot of black families don't invest in their kids talents like they don't like they don't when they hear something that's creative it just sounds like no, it's not a doctor. It's not a lawyer. Like, a oh my hobby. god. Yeah, they want. They it's want a hobby. To be, take the practical route. Like, do what makes sense according to society standards, but not yeah. really like what you're passionate about. They're thinking of it as, oh, it's just a hobby. But don't don't spend right. too much time or money or you know like or school time on it. You have to be a doctor. You have to be a lawyer. You know. Right. Like, so that's a challenge. That's a challenge. Relatable. That's a big, 
yeah, having people understand that this is not a game. <laughs> it's not a game, guys. It's not a game. <laughs> Wake this up. This is real life. This is real, this is real life. Real life. Yes. And I'm about it. Yeah, grateful for my parents for pushing my craft. I agree. Absolutely. That is what's I, up. That's, that's what's important. Up. I mean, for, yeah. for some people, it might even be the opposite. Like, they need they need to be so, in, like, they become independent and so self reliant yeah. that they're like, you know what, I'm going to do it regardless. And that's, like, kind of their, um, you know, their their fire. That's where it's it fortuitous. comes. Fortuitous. It's very fortuitous, very, mm -hmm. like, resilient. Like, yeah. I like all those big words, girl, because that's <laughs> what I felt like. I was giving you very much so, like, and this is what I think I, advice to any artist who's out there who's aspiring, producers, um, you know, <laughs> painters, you know, whatever you may do in your craft, like, do not give up, y'all. Like, it really, it sounds so simple, but it's really so loaded. Like, it's like, it's so easy to give up. It's so easy to say, I'm actually not going to do this anymore. But then when you look at your life in retrospect, five years from, from now, are you going to really be happy with that decision? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what motivates me to keep going and, like, really making this music. Because this is something that I'm really taking serious. This is not a game for me. And, like, the fruits of your labor will show through time and time again. So that's where I'm at. Thank you so much for that, you know, inspiration right there for all the people who have, you know, craft that they want to develop and they want to keep working on and pursue. That was yeah. really great advice, you know. So thank you for that. It's, I'm pretty it's... sure I was like appreciative of, you know, the tips that you, you know, you just gave like a little, you dropped some keys right there. Some, some gems, gems, some little gems. <laughs> keys to the game <laughs> okay um, so tell us what are you working on now litty kitty three volume three and actually this one is really cool um it's called litty kitty volume three the bop vault the bop vault and like let me tell you litty kitty volume two had to happen i did litty kitty volume one kind of as an intro thing i worked in it like i tell you 24 uh from 2014 through 20 for four years because remember it took me to go on the right tracks and I just think it was a compilation, but it was very assorted and I didn't really have direction. Liddy Kitty 2 is what really gave me, like, direction. Like, I I actually added one of my good friends, Melissa Michelle. She's a poet. She has six tracks on that, five or six tracks on the album. I called her up one day. I said, listen, like, I'm trying to pull this album together. I want everything to pull together and sound like it's a project. Like, like I want to do like the old, yes. like the 90s, like yes. the 90s where they went in and they actually found themes and they comp they compiled their stuff around this theme. And for me, I had so many connections because I, I write music on the go. Like I hear something, I record it right away on my mm -hmm. phone and then I write a song later. So that's how it is for me now. So I was like, I don't want to lose that and just put songs together and make it something. I want this to be like a real thing. And so theme wise, like this love album, like inviting like a poet who has a sexual energy and a sexual voice and like she's like a mini janet jackson like it gives that like energy putting her on the project doing that th that solidified the project for me and she doesn't know how big of a thank you like i mean i can't even imagine how much more of a thank you i could give her but that's it was incredible she was a part of it but Liddy kitty volume three has a bop feel to it and it's like Hits and mugshots gonna be on this. Shall I serve this mug? Shall I serve this face? Your face was the case. Um, there's gonna be a couple other bops in there. Jacked up's gonna be on it. If you're still on Jack, yo, I don't want you. I want a real nigga. But it's like I, it's gonna be so <laughs> many. It's gonna be so many hit, like bops on there, and they all are in theme to what I'm preaching: freedom, authenticity, and I think people are really gonna like it. It's more on the house meets like. Jersey, Detroit, bounce. Like it's more on that side. Yeah. Like I have a um song, I can't even say it on here because it's R rated, but it's called the D Don't Bite. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that that's one of my favorite songs on actually and I so I've recorded probably out of I don't know, I'm still deciding if I want ten or twelve tracks, but I've recorded probably like three of them already and just doing some, you know, some finagling with, with how it sounds. And I'm really excited to just get the rest out the way. But that's coming in a few months. Nothing yeah. crazy. And then I'm shooting some music videos, too. So that's also on the agenda. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, I feel like we're all excited for what's to come. Oh, thank um, you, sir. Already, we're getting excited just hearing about it. You talking about it so passionately. And yeah. you are so thorough, so authentic, that everyone just feels oh. like the hearts go off. The hearts are going thank off. You. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys, for the hearts. Feel that love. <laughs> All that love. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
And so, um, are you gonna by chance have a music video for any of these? I, liter I literally am shooting uh, maybe in October. I'm, I wanna shoot two back to back for the existing projects. I wanted my whole Beyonce moments is where I did like, you know, like 16 music okay, videos cool. to these songs, but it just costs a lot of money for me. Yeah, it, it costs a lot of money. And it's like, for me, I, I don't mind spending, you're investing in yourself, but I have to think strategically about how I'm releasing music. You know, the streams don't really pay much, you know, like that's, I'm, I'm not getting a huge return on investment right now, but I will say with good faith that something's gonna come before the end of the year, hopefully, and it's gonna be really creative. Like my first music video was so dope. Like the concept, Sugar Kitty, you know, Sugar Daddy, Kitty Bounce. I mean, it was just, it was just crazy. It was just crazy. It defined me. Freedom. Shout out to everybody who was on set. You know, yeah. I was just talking to my homegirl, Christine, who was a big part of that project. And she designed her clothes on that. You know, she did her, she, she really did a good job with just everything. And she was one of the models and she danced with me. And I Amazing. want my next, yeah, I want my next music video to have that same feel. Um, I might shoot it for the girl. Shout out to Darnell who interviewed me uh, I, we dropped the interview last night. He loves the song, The Girls, and I actually think I'm gonna make a music video to The Girls. You heard it here first, because that actually is a runway heavy. I can see it on Bravo. I can see it on like some you of the best shows. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what it's giving. So I, you'll see some visuals from me pretty soon. You heard it here first. You like get a music video for the girls. Hey, news uh, alert. You heard it here first. <laughs> you see all the parts, all the. <laughs> I wish I had a bell or something I could ring, like a bell. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> alert, alert. <laughs> what alert, is it? alert. What is it called? It's a. <laughs> oh, those little amber alerts we get on our phones, girl. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> those are so annoying. <laughs> You're in your first now. That's annoying. I think people have uh, post dramatics <laughs> from that one. No. Girl, it'll be like a chain effect. It'll be like, one side of the room. That, it just depends on what kind of service you got. Sprint, maybe. This is if I why take I turn mine off. I turn mine off because I know everyone has an Can you turn them I'm off? Hear it. Yes. Go to settings. I do not fuck with that. Like, no. I turn it off. If I'm around people, I'm gonna hear it. I'm gonna know, I'm like, and I'll just ask like, oh, what's it for? Is it a flood or is it like an amber right. alert? Emergency alerts, you could turn off, you know, that uh, 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 type of I wanna turn off the one that where it's like the weird cars in the neighborhood. Like, I, for me, I'm like, I can, I can see a car. If it's, I guess it kind of helps to like, kind of identify who the criminals are. Yeah, yeah. But like to send me like a license, like, or a license plate or like no, a no, description I, of a I car. I just turned it off. I'm sorry. But everyone around you already has iPhones and they don't really, you know, they're they're gonna have it on. So you just ask them like, hey, what was it this time? <laughs> what should I be exactly. looking out for? You know, like you're, no. <laughs> uh -huh. However, um, oh, we have 30 seconds left. Girl, I know we're about to leave, but I, I'll tell you this, guys, watch the debate tonight. Joe Biden versus Trump. Please guys, get engaged, mm -hmm. go vote. Please register to vote, guys. We need your votes. I don't care who you vote for. Well, I actually do care, but I'm not going to tell you who I'm voting for. But now I'm going to tell you. I'm voting for Biden. Get this man out of the White House if you can. I don't know if you want to, but listen. Go vote. Go vote. Please go vote. It's so Ooh, important. Great message. And please Thank do you. the census in your neighborhood. If you haven't done the Ooh, census, yeah, I don't know. Census. I don't Thank know you so much for coming on the Garnet Report. Thank you, my love.